Okay, welcome back everybody. This is Coder J. We're at the admin building right now. This is the science building. This is a dedicated channel, the JCS Computer Science channel. Thanks for sticking with me. Welcome to the next block lesson in this algorithms course. I'm Coder J. I've been a programmer for many years. I'm in the science department on the second floor of the admin building. I'm working with my research scientist, Mouse. We're working hard to deliver to you as much information on the subject matter of computer science to increase your learning capacity in as many iterations as possible. So I'm in the virtual computer lab every day gathering more and more information as things evolve from moment to moment in time. Okay, so I'm in the science department. I'm in the admin building. It's a science uh, building, if you will. We focus on different branches of science. I'm in computer science. Uh, Charlotte uh, Wellington is our head administrator. Uh, Mouse is our research science scientist. I'm I, I'm on the second floor in the computer lab. That's that's where I'm at. Um, a lot of uh, different you know, groups here, a lot of things going on, um, but I'm involved in the computer science and the research behind it. This is the virtual space where we work to harness that knowledge. Here is where we solve problems within the relevant logic, as you can see right here. Let's continue with this algorithms course. Look at uh, exponential search algorithm from within the space. This is our collection. Let's work on exponential search. Let's do this right now here in and within the virtual space. That's what we call it. This is where we solve the problems. Uh, you stick with me, you're gonna you know, get the information, the logic you need. So we have a sorted collection, one, two, nine, 30, 41, 49, 56, 60, 99, so on. We're going to use exponential search to find one of these values. Okay, so we're going to target, uh, you know, let's say 30. Let's say we want to target 30. So we're going to use exponential search to do that. So we're going to target that and and then it uh, will come with and finish with binary search, right? So it kind of, you know, will sub binary search and kind of do a, do a doubling, if you will. Okay. So we're going to apply that. We're going to move yeah, in that, uh, you know, from the zero index, and it's going to be to the power of two. So one to the power of two is one. So we will start with one and go to index one, which is two. We're looking for 30. So that is not 30. So we're going to go two to the power of two. Okay, like this, All right, which, which is 30, so we found it. All right, so now, good. Now, let's say we wanted to find uh, uh, 56. Okay, 56. We start at 1. 1 to the power of 1 is 1, index 1, 0, 1. So two does, two does not equal 56. So let's go to the power of two. 30. 30 is not equal to 56. Go to the power of... Here's three, right? So the power of four. Uh, four to the power of two is... Right here. Okay, so we didn't find it yet. Right? We didn't find it yet. Uh, so, uh, we want to 
say that if we come back uh, through here, and I want to explain this a little bit more. Um, the rule here at four says that we can actually do four times four instead of four to the power of two. So I don't have to go all the way to 16, right? And that's kind of what I was trying to say there, actually. So technically, it's supposed to be uh, the 16th um, position. But there is an exception to that rule that I'm going to use. Mouse and I are going to use that, actually, here in the uh, research lab. And just say that we want to go... Uh, four times two. Okay. Because of the size of the collection. So we don't want to stop here. We want to be able to traverse here because there, there is no 16th position. So we want to basically div divide that by two. All right. So we can say uh, the formula uh, for this small collection is one to the power of two. Uh, 2 to the power of 2, 4 to the power of 2 divided by 2, like that, okay? That brings us here, okay? So what is 4 to the power of 2 divided by 2? It's position position uh, 8, okay? So sometimes, sometimes we got to kind of talk this thing out a little bit, uh, straight out of the virtual... Uh, science and computer lab, uh, research science as well, uh, alongside me. All right, so let's work on it together. Um, so now we have to say, okay, 60 is not 56. So what do we do next? Um, we have to go to the range to the immediate left. And we'll see this in code as well. So position 8 minus 1 is the uh, seventh position, okay? Sixth index, okay? So now we perform a binary search here. Okay? Right there, a binary search here, right? So 30 to 56 is our binary search area, right? So, uh, so I'm here again in on the second floor of the admin building right now. Binary search will be, be performed right here. Four divided by two gives us, gives us a mid of this. 56 is greater than 41. It's not equal to 41, so we have to go here and now do a, a midpoint of 2 divided by 2, which is 1, that's 49. 49 is not 56. So now we finally find it by traversing over 1, and it's uh, found using exponential search, okay? All right, so that's how you use exponential search. So again, one to the power of two, uh, two to the power of two, right? Um, uh, four to the power of two. Okay, and then uh, four to the power of two is 16, and then uh, uh, for the power of two is 16. Uh, so how, how do we get here? We do a four to the power of two divided by two, like that. Okay, so a position, right? 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's position eight is 60. That's how we uh, get, uh, we're, we're towards the end of the um, collection. So we can't get to position 16. So it's position 16 divided by two. And then we do the binary search on eight minus one to get to what we're trying to search. Uh, so that is essentially exponential search. So if we so go through it a couple of times, we're going to come back around and do exponential search again in another uh, another course because the motto of this, uh, you know, our objective of um, this channel, right, the JCS Computer Science channel, the objective is to get you the logic in as many iterations as possible. Okay, now uh, now we're ready to implement it. Um, in Python, the exponential search algorithm in Python itself. That's what we're using for this course. So go ahead and open up a REPL and we're gonna go and work through this together. Let's implement the exponential search algorithm. Import math. Uh, from the library, the Python standard library. We're going to call it exponential search. And we need a collection. We need a length and a target. Think about what we did. Think about what we did on the board. Uh, think about what we did in the virtual space. We call it a virtual space. Some people call it a, a board or like a some kind of chalkboard from the from a long time ago. But this is the virtual space. Um, this is a new thing, a new school approach, a new technology, a new time, okay? The virtual space to solve these problems, right? To solve the logic. Two to the power of i here, which is i, equ I equals the uh, positions, right? So we're going to use positions. Uh, not indexes here, so we'll just count from one using the position approach, because that is what we're working with, right? Um, working with a collection, the collection, a small collection that had um, eight elements in it, right? So just try to visualize what we what we're just working on. Okay, target and then the m value less than the length of that collection. Uh, I equals the um, we're going to increment that position. Think about the collection and we're going from remember from zero one uh, uh, zero, one, or one, I'm sorry, one, two, position, visualize it. One, two, four, 16, remember? Divided by two, eight, to try to find the midpoint, eight minus one to get the midpoint, uh, to, uh, to complete exponential search that works uh, alongside binary search in that little space. Because we're, we're trying to narrow it down to get to 56, remember that? So we're here to help you break down the information, right? In small blocks. Um, so that you get the information with understanding. And we're trying to get it to you in as many iterations as possible so you can increase your learning capacity. And that's the, the whole idea here. Right? What was the low? What was the high? Think about it. Just think through it. Okay. The low was zero and the high was n minus one. Remember? Think about the chart. Think about the virtual space. Think about the collection that we were just working through. And, you know, think about how we're doing this. Mid. Low plus high divided by two. If the collection of the midpoint equals the target 
56, all right? Return mid. We found it. Else. Collection of mid less than the uh, target, all right? Think about it. Think it through code. Low equals go to the right. Go to the right of the collection, right? Else go to the left. All right, see? So think think through what we uh, did on in the within the virtual space because we we already we already solved it already. So as the as we write the code, um, think about our uh, native virtual space where we solved it. All right, it's a translation of, of sorts here in you know using Python. So it's you know it's two ways of solving the same problem. The reason why I say that is because because you know people tend to get caught up get caught up in the code and they're worried so much about this. But it's just Python. It's all it is. It's a language. So we start at one. We use our power of two. If the first uh, element in the, in the collection we, we're indexing into zero in this case. The return zero. Um, M is the power of two traversal. If it's less than equal to the target or less than length, then we'll continue. There's something to, to traverse through. So I plus one increment by the power of two right here, eight and nine. Low to the length of the collection minus one because we don't want to go out of bounds. While the low is less than or equal to the high. Then traverse some more. Mid will be low plus high divided by two. Okay. All right. So the low plus the high floor division two. All right. That was us saying four divided by two. And uh, we want to round appropriately. Okay, so if it was two, then it's two. It's floor division. And it's two point five, you know, and then just make it two. Um, you know, that's what how we found those values. Go to the mid. Okay, so if that is equal to the target, then we found it. If it's less than the target, go to the. Go to the. Okay, so if the midpoint here is less than the intended target, Python sees the opposite direction. Go to the right, else go to the left. So this is Python's way of saying mapping to us in the virtual space. So what do we say? How do we solve it? We, say, we, we found that um, in the virtual space, we found, we're looking at 56 and we're we're pointing at let's say 31 31 is less than target so move to the right else move to the left see how it sees it in kind of like a kind of an inverse kind of fashion there All right it just goes else right so you don't need to specify and say okay if it's greater than go to the left pretty straightforward if mid, if call of mid is greater than target, right, then go to the left. If it's less than target, go to the right. So plus, mean, plus one means go to the right, minus one means go to the left, and that maps one to one to what we just did. So now... Let's go here and just return something like that, negative one. And just to say that we're done. Everything should line up, this should work. Um, there are so many different ways to implement this. I mean, this is our way of doing it within this particular block cycle. Don't get too hung up on, on this. Um, we're, we're, again, we already, sol we already solved this already. This is just, you know, a course that we happen to be just using Python right now. 
And so, you know, in a lesson upcoming, uh, another algorithms course in another iteration, uh, we'll probably just use English um, for that one. And, it'll, you know, it'll be fine. All right. So let's go. So we have one, two, uh, let's just say four, eight, uh, 16, 90, 99, 100, 145, 199. All right. So now in a, some kind of collection of uh, numbers. And we need, you know, the length of that collection, which is not an array, by the way, just a collection. Now, let's go into that collection, length of collection, like that. Uh, length of collection, which means that I don't need this. Now, we want to print that collection, right? And then look for ninety like that. All right, we'll look for ninety. Let's see if we can get this solved. Um, N will equal the exponential search of collection. Collection, length of collection, and the look, what we're looking for, what we're looking for. So if um, the, if N is equal to or greater than or equal to zero, then um, found at I guess we can use the index. Else, the search was unsuccessful. So we're doing a lot of this, guys. We're going to be doing a lot of code as well. Um, well, the index is N here. So a lot of coding in, in this um, virtual school system, right, on this channel. Uh, Python is just one language, uh, other languages, even English itself coming into play. The virtual space, of course, is our main place to solve these algorithms. And I'll continue to work with the mouse, our research scientist, to get you as much information again in as many iterations as possible. Um, guys, let's try to solve this here and see what we get. Can we find 90? Let's try. Okay, yeah, so let's try to find 90. Uh, by simply running it with the green, you should be in the same interface on uh, the green uh, play button there. Uh, interpreting, resolving. So we found, okay, let's count. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Yep, found at index five. So we have indeed solved exponential search algorithm using Python.